The track is Further On Up The Road by Sandy Tom. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Now, um, you chose that one to sing because it's proper bluesy. Yeah. And that's where <laughs> we find you in 2010, isn't it? Yes, yes. I mean, you know, the, this record is its definitely a, a blues rock record. And, you know, the, the, the main reason for that is really the fact that it's, um, it's an independent one, you know. So have all the other ingredients were the same, you know, the same writers, the same producer, the same band. Um, but the, the big difference was that it was it's an independent record. So, you know, I've got creative ownership and basically I'm the boss. So, you know, I, I get to call the shots. So this is really the record that I've always wanted to make. That's really interesting. It's called Merchants and Thieves. Yes. It's due out. May the 17th. <laughs> And you say it's a record that you've always wanted to make, and that implies that in the days when you were, you were with a major record label, which you mm -hmm. were with, and you were making albums, that they were they were changing your sound, they were tweaking it. You know, I think the thing is about it is is that um, th there's always going to be that element of compromise, you know, because you've got so many people involved, and and at the end of the day, you know, everybody wants to be happy with the end with the end result. So, it, and unfortunately, in the end, I think it, it gets diluted, you know, and it gets it just gets churned out over and over again, and and you lose you lose the soul, I guess, in it. I mean, you know, it works different ways for different people. I mean, you know, it, it works obviously very well for so many people to be on a major label. Um, but for me personally, it works, I think, the best like this. You know, I think this is this is really how, how I how I roll. So Now there's a track on your album called Show No Concern, which we're going to hear a yeah. little bit later on. And there's a lyric in there that says, Well, they took all of my money, they changed all of my <laughs> songs. Yeah. It doesn't take a great leap of imagination no. to, to know who you're singing about there, does no. it really? I wasn't being cryptic. No. <laughs> No. But is that how you you really feel? Ah, oh, you know, it's it's taken in jest. You know, I mean, I I actually feel really grateful for my experience with Sony because um, it, it wouldn't it you know without it I wouldn't be able to run a record label. You know, because I mean, this is like I said, it's an independent record, so it's it's my own label that's putting it out. I mean, we have you know a lot of people employed, and it, it takes a great deal of. Um, just a little bit, you know, of, of, of savvy, really, to do all that. And and I I taught I got taught a lot from being signed to a major, so I actually take that really positively, you know. I can imagine that you're quite hands on for yeah. this new label, are you? <laughs> oh, you know, I'm like everyone's worst nightmare. I'm always on the phone, always on the emails, always, you know. But it's it's so cool to have that independence, and it's very cool to to have that freedom. And it's like you know, rather than just being an artist and when you achieve something you achieve it as an artist but we, like I achieve it you know for my label as well so you know the the, the single at the minute is um it's it's kind of on and off the number one spot in the in the iTunes blues chart and um and that's a great sense of achievement for my little record label to have that you know as its first um you know mark so it, it's it's like I think it's it's a harder job running it and doing it yourself but it, the achievement in the rewards are much um they're much bigger you know and is this label going to be concerned with releasing your songs solely or are you going to go out looking for new artists <laughs> as well depends how many records i sell um, <laughs> okay you know i mean um my brother and is um he's very much involved in it and he's really keen on going out and finding other artists but at the minute i'm just like look, let's just get my record out first and let's see how it does but i mean it would be great to give other people the opportunity certainly the title of the album is merchants and thieves Yes. Where did that come from? Well, it, originally I heard um, it's it's a Chris Whitley cover as a Dylan song. Um, Chris Whitley was a, a blues singer songwriter um, who sadly passed away uh, six years ago now I think, um, and and he covers a Dylan song um, in the line "Merchant and Thieves" appears in it, and it just kind of resonated um, in my mind. Maybe it had some kind of you know, bearing on my what I was feeling at the time, so it, it just seemed like a really great title. So if you actually, um, the title track on the album is an instrumental guitar track. So I suppose that's in a lot of ways that's me saying, "Here, look, I can do this," mm. because you know that you know making a, a record under a major, you you wouldn't be able to put a instrumental guitar track on there. So so it was uh, that was like me saying, "I've got, I'm the boss, I've got the reins." 
Now, there, there was a story, this is going back way back, and, and this really should be dead in the water, this story. We're going to ask you about it anyway. When <laughs> I Wish I Was a Punk Rocker came out, yes. and it, 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 it began very organically, didn't it? It grew mm. through the internet. But then, once it was number one, there were allegations that the record company had plotted all of that. Mm. Had <laughs> they, or did it grow organically? God, no. No, 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 no. Definitely not. I mean, let, let me paint you a picture. It's like, there's me, there's Marcus, and my guitarist at the time, and there's Craig. And we, we literally just sat in the basement in my flat in Tooting. I had a flat in Tooting. And the reason that I took that flat in Tooting, of all places in London that you would end up, I really didn't know anything about London. I ended up in Tooting because of the fact that this flat had this basement. The previous landlord was this guy called Boris, who, who eventually moved to Ireland. And he's a jazz musician. And so when he lived there, he used to record bands down in the in the basement. So he had soundproofed the whole thing and everything. So it was just brilliant for me to move into this flat that had this, this little basement that was all soundproofed and stuff because it's hard enough trying to live in London, let alone find a rehearsal space. So we turned it into like a little den and, uh, and we webcast it out of it. Um, and I think, you know... Unfortunately, I just kind of became the victim of one of those build you up, knock you down stories. Um, but, you know, again, it's like I, I look back on it now and, you know, I know like in so many like experiences in life when you're at, in, in a place at the time and it's really horrible, you don't really know. You can't imagine why on earth this would be positive in the end. But I actually think back on it and I think, well, it was character building and it, and it certainly didn't leave me naive to what. I could expect, you know, in, in terms of negative press. So, so I learned a lot again from that situation, and, and um, you know, I actually feel really proud of being part of something that was quite revolutionary at the time. So, well, it was gra absolutely groundbreaking, wasn't it? Totally it, groundbreaking. I mean, for you know, it, it, I, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to claim like I had some genius moment or anything, but you know, it was. I think a lot of it was timing and luck. Mm. You know, it was something that that was really poignant and really new, and I kind of grasped on that and I made full use of it I suppose so I knew in doing that that it would catch attention but that's what I was trying to do I was trying to sell a record and it was a great success uh, as merchants as thieves will be I'm absolutely certain <laughs> just just going back to that album then now um, we, we know the sort of style of the record now yeah. but what about the content in terms of emotions and lyrics on there is the whole range of things on it it's like you know the, the funny thing about this album is that um you know, in the last year or so, uh, the, the the person that I've spent the last five years of my life with, my my the fiance, the man I was going to marry, um, we very sadly broke up at the end of last year, and I remember um, we said at the end of the second album, you know, if we make another one, it'll it'll be the end of us, and we did. We made another one, and and it turned out to be the demise of my relationship as well as. Being a, a great milestone in my recording career, I think, you know, it was unfortunately on the other side of it, there was a lot of sadness. So the ironic thing about it is, is that it turned out to be a blues record. And really, it was all from that situation. A lot of those songs on the album are really written out of that situation. And the funny thing is, is that Jake and I wrote a lot of those songs together. So... Um, you know, in in some ways, I think it's it's a really good thing because when it comes to singing them and performing them, you know, believing in them, like it's like my whole heart's in it because it's so honest, you know. It's and it's 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 a really. I mean, the last year has been such a bizarre experience for me. You know, so many things have happened, and I met Joe Bonamassa last year as well, and that was a really unexpected turn of events um, that led me to meet him, and, and then he ended up playing on the album, and. So it's many, amazing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so many things have come up, you know, and so many things have happened that have really contributed to this record. So I do feel like it's, you know, everybody's put their heart and soul into it. So you're touring at the moment, you're at the Rescue Rooms in Nottingham tomorrow night. I just wonder how it feels to stand on stage and see those eyes peering back at you when you're actually singing something that is, is straight from the heart, isn't mm. it? And I, you know, I dare say a few, more than a few tears were shed over the making of this record as well. Well, it was absolutely. I mean, I... I I love it because the best feeling on earth is to stand on stage and to sing something and to know that you entirely believe in it. And I think that's maybe, you know, in the in the past with the second album, you know, like I said, it gets diluted and some, you know, I'm, I'm such a bad liar. And I genuinely can't stand on stage and say, you know, and sing with conviction and play with conviction unless I really believe it. Mm. So this album is like, it's a joy to, to perform because... You know, every single lyric, every single moment in it is like straight from the heart. And 
And in, and in the same way with the band, you know, everybody's involved in, um, everybody's been involved in, in the making of it, playing it, and, and uh, my guitarist has, has written, co-written a lot of songs with me as well. So we all kind of stand there and just, you know, we play and sing with conviction. And I think knowing that I can do that for an audience is, is the best feeling, really. All right, Sandy Tom, it's a pleasure to see you again. Thank you very much indeed for calling in and, and doing this marvellous session. We're going to hear another track from you now. This is Maggie McCall. Would you like to talk us into this one? Maggie McCall is just one of those songs, you know, I, I said to um, Randall, my guitar player, and Jake, um, who produced the album and co-wrote the songs with me, I said to them, you know, um, we should write a song that you that you kind of, that you sing around candlelight when the electricity goes out in a storm. Something really creepy and eerie. So Randall said, why don't we write it about, you know, this, this fictitious girl called Maggie McCall. Sounds like kind of Irish, you know, like a bit of a bit of a tear away. So we so we wrote this song about this girl who kills her father, and um, runs away, and you know she's on the run from the law, and it's all it's all very cool. It's it's, it's a really cool story, but it was funny when we were writing it because none of us knew eventually what was going to happen to this girl. So we're like, what happens next, you know? So we just kind of very much made it up on the on the spot, and it turned out to be a great song, very Johnny Cash sort of two step. Yeah. All right, we'll hear it now, Sandy. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.